Today I'm going to talk to you about defensive scripts for CTFs. Uh, just a quick question, does anybody do CTFs here? Anybody junkie? Okay, cool. So uh, the pictures here is pretty much me saying here's defensive, defense in depth. Um, anyone know what this is? Samper's Palace in Tokyo. Sweet, all right. I actually didn't know, so <laughs> that's from straight from Google Images. Um, so this defensive depth, they got a moat, they have uh, you know, sidewalls you can't get up. I mean, you can try. And then obviously, if you see here, that's an actual hole where people shoot arrows from. It's pretty deadly. Uh, I did a project on this in like community college. So anyways, quick about me. Uh, my name's Chris Huell, I'm on a blue team. I do CTFs for fun. It's just something to you know, keep me going, keep my skills up. Uh, Pretty much I mentor a few students from UMC. We have like a uh, cyber team. And also I am a uh, contributor to TeamSploit. So Justin Ray does some projects, a couple scripts I'll show you guys in the next uh, couple slides. And pretty much finally decided to come out and share some scripts with you guys. And I've been on the forums for a while, haven't really contributed, so I'm here to give back. So this is me like when I was 12, using sub-7. I thought I was like an awesome hacker. Does anyone use sub-7 still? Good. Yeah. Just checking. Uh, that's me now. I rollerblade in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, man. Should come out. Um, so <laughs> it's a quick overview. Uh, pretty much, I'm going to say, talk about like why, why do you need defense for CTFs? Uh, I'll talk about you know, what makes a good defensive script, what, uh, what you can use, Python, what other scripting languages, bash, batch, whatever. Uh, so I'll show some examples, I'll show you how, I won't show you how to deploy with Metasploit, but I can give you the framework of like, what you would need to do. Um, and I have some resources and I'll talk about some takeaways at the end. So anybody play, uh, this is an old, yeah. Yeah, I was addicted to that for a while, but it brought back memories. So pretty much this is going to be for more like King of the Hill style CTFs. So it's pretty much you have some bunch of boxes and you have to pwn them and then make sure other guys don't come in and take it from you. Uh, pretty simple. Cyber Olympics, that's pretty much what the finals was. Um, and pretty much spending less time defending. You don't want to sit there and have to pull up TCP view or curb ports and sit there and kicking people off. Uh, you normally have different people. You have your attackers on your team. You have your defenders who are going to sit there, watch each box, and if anybody gets in, you want to kick them out. Uh, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just automate it. So what makes a good defensive script? Uh, has little dependencies. And what I say by that is you want to be able to throw a script on a box and it run. You don't want to have to worry about compiling on that box or having to uh, have like Perl installed or something like that. Um, pretty much you want to test it on all variations. I was saying Windows 2000 through Win7 because CTFs, they give you really old machines and you got to deal with it. So uh, you want it to be easy to use, that's obvious. You want to not have common binary names, meaning um, you don't want to have something that says TCB view or there's my defensive script.exe or something. Pretty obvious. Uh, you want it to be stealthy, meaning you don't want to use, like, I don't know, uh, you don't want to throw it in Sys32, leave it there, and then someone else come over you and delete them. So another place you can put it, I don't know, recycler. Just think of paths that you would, malware would use, system volume information, stuff like that. Uh, persistence, you want to be able to reboot the box, and it's still protecting you. Uh, when I say use whitelist versus blacklist, you don't want to just sit there and say, uh, you know, whatever.exe is bad, whatever this is bad, or this IP is bad. That's too much work. You just want to have a whitelist of known goods, or uh, for instance, I'll show you in the next uh, couple, couple things here. And you want it to be modular, so you don't want to depend on a certain, uh, you don't want to have it like pretty much one static file. You want to kind of have it modular so you can take pieces and I'll show you in the next couple slides. And less hard coding, you want it to accept parameters so you can send it things and tell it to do things. 
Uh, so what can you build in your own? Batch scripting? I mean, it's pretty old. Does anybody still batch script? Yeah, figures. You, you got no choice. <laughs> uh, VBS? So VBS, I mean, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so WScript, using WScript to run stuff. Uh, Python, does anyone use PY installer? Cool, one guy, two guys. So PY installer is pretty much taking Python script, um, compiling it to one file, an exe file, and you would package Python with it. So that means the file may be three megs and the actual script itself may be like five kilobytes or something. But package it up and you have one file you can run on any box, no dependencies. Has anybody created something like that for Lua? Because the engine for Lua is like 3K, it's tiny. Not that I know of. But I would assume someone probably has figured it out. <laughs> um, so C, C++, you can, I mean, if you want to spend time writing some defense scripts in C, go ahead, but I, that's too much time. Uh, Linux, Bash, Perl, Python, Ruby, same stuff. So why am I using Python? C is better. I don't know, someone, I don't know who's hardcore C coders here, but I'm not. <laughs> These guys are. C yeah, I can do it, but it takes way too long. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it, yeah, it comes with most Linux, Linux distros. Uh, most of the CTFs I've seen, it's been on there. It just depends. Uh, it can be packaged as executable. Talked about that already. Standard library is pretty powerful. If you're, is anybody an actual Python coder here, or just write scripts? Two guys, same two guys, or three guys. Um, you can actually go out to that website there. You can check out the libraries. It's pretty powerful stuff. A lot of things you can do straight out of Python without external libraries. Uh, it's easy to debug, tons of example code, develop faster. I suck at C. Okay, next. Uh, use Python system commands. So this is just an example of like what you could do with it. Yeah, subprocess is way better. This is just like a basic, uh, I want to run two commands and print out something. So I'm just going to show you some point of proof of concepts. I built this to show some students at the school um, how you can use this to develop tools, and it's really not that hard. Uh, pretty much what you're doing is detecting a scan on a target. I don't know if you guys have heard on Linux boxes where someone's trying to brute force or something, SSH brute force, and then you just auto ban them, and add them to the IP tables. Same concept for Windows, listening on port 22. Take that IP, pass it to Windows firewall, and block them. And I can show you a quick demo real quick. So this box is running that executable here. That's that guy. And for my Kali box, I'm just gonna run and map. Just basic right out of the right out of the box. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Dash P? Uh, PN, no pain, no ping. Good call. Have you played around with Autoit? Have you seen Autoit? Autoit? Yeah, I've seen that. Um, you can compile, what is it? Like it's a scripting it's language? A scripting language. Uh, the reason we liked it is that you compile little executables mm -hmm. and they're very portable across different Windows versions. Okay, I'll add that to that. Thanks. Python? Is that Python? No, it's its own language. But it's really handy, it's easy to learn, and it opens up Kong and stuff like that. So you can do some pretty good stuff with it. But yeah, you can throw it at a Windows box and it'll run. <coughs> I'll definitely check that out. <coughs> so. Pretty much, I added this to. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What this did is it added a straight an auto ban, and it added it to the Windows firewall. <coughs> and I'll show you where it is if I can get to it. So it pretty much just created a rule, ban that IP. Um, there's obviously some vulnerabilities. Does anybody know what you could do? Uh, against this box to maybe disrupt it in any way. Or? Yeah, exactly. So to fix that, just whitelist your known goods, whitelist the score bot, whitelist default gateway, whatever. Um, that's not added in the script, but I'll probably add it later. 
<laughs> so here's another one that I did. Uh, it's pretty much killing foreign established connections. What I'm saying by that is someone creates a TCP connection to your box. If you can see the net stat, this will kill it. Um, you're going to add all of your team's IPs to pretty much your script that I'm going to run here. Um, it's looking for established connections and then from there it's going to use cur ports and just kill that connection. So it's not going to kill the service, but it's going to pretty much just keep killing whoever is trying to create a interpreter session. And I'll do a demo real quick for that. So here's a script, uh, here's the executable, and I gave it a couple IPs just for testing um, that I would want to whitelist, and I'll have that running. So I'll take the Kali box, still scanning because it thinks it's alive. Uh, here I'm just using MS-08, I'm just going to exploit this Windows SP2 box. So it automatically fails. And over here you see, here's the IP that attempted to pretty much exploit the box. Um, what's kind of funny about it is if they keep trying, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. So it's a good thing if someone has a bunch of interpreter sessions on, your, on that box, you pretty much throw your script on there, kill them all, and hope to keep people out. Uh, I'm just going to talk about a couple other projects that are out there. Unsploitable is a project that uh, Justin Ray and a couple other guys worked on. Um, what it did is it pretty much matches Metasploit scans with patches and it'll generate a VB script, put it on the box, run it, and it'll go and grab a bunch of uh, patches and then install them. So you probably have to go out and check it out, look at the code, and uh, see if it'll work out for you. Uh, Wintroll, this is actually a kind of funny script. Pretty much what it does is it runs on the box. It'll pretty much kill every tool that you can think of, um, kill a bunch of command shells, uh, a couple CTFs that we've done where people are just keep trying to spawn cmd.exe and it just dies. Uh, it locks the box. It creates multiple avenues of persistence, meaning it has like, I don't know, 10 different reg keys and some other cool stuff. Um, there's a new version going out. If you go out right now, it's kind of an old one. I think they're going to push out to the repo probably sometime soon. And just shoot me an email and I'll, let you, I'll send you a new version. Uh, some defensive tools for the blind. Pretty much this is another tool by Justin. He pretty much, some of you guys may have already seen this before, but uh, it goes through cron jobs, SSH auth keys. It looks for web shells, anything that has like sysexec in, in a PHP file and it'll go and delete it. Um, files and temp, looks in Etsy hosts, seeing if anybody's like put anything in there, looks for all root accounts and kills terminals. Uh, and you can get it out at this site. I'll put this, uh, I'll put this presentation up for everybody to download. So deploy with Metasploit, it's actually pretty easy if you start creating uh, your own build script. And what I mean by that is, uh, has anybody wrote a script to build another script? Anything like that? It's kind of weird, right? So what it is is pretty much your script will go out and echo out another script. So if I took a .sh uh, shell script, I could echo out a batch script that's custom to what I need. So <laughs> have you? Um, I have, I've built a script that writes this script. Okay. Yeah, it's good stuff. So you can keep it modular. Um, what that does is I can start the CTF, ask my team members, what are your IPs? And then they're going to hand them over to me. I'm going to throw them into my config file, generate my script, and then all of my deploy scripts will have their IPs along with the scorebot. Um, another thing is, does anybody like, does anybody do any blue team work where they deploy to a box, run scripts, and then collect data back? Well, what you could do is the same thing here. You're pretty much zipping a bunch of files, your package, which may include like 10 files, Throw it onto a box, have it unzip itself, do some stuff. Do you have some? No? Oh. And uh, it'll pretty much unzip itself, run, run itself, clean itself up, move it to a location that someone else can't get to and delete it. Uh, other stuff you can do like time, time stomping. You can clean up after yourself. I mean, there's a lot of teams that might have time to sit there and figure out where your tools are and get rid of them. 
And this also works for like student competitions like CCDC and stuff like that. I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. And I'll probably be releasing the code for this sometime soon. Uh, after this Cyber Olympics, I'll probably just put it out there. So I don't think I'm going to do too many of them after that. So here's some learning resources. If you're not a Python guy, it's not that bad. It's actually really easy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It just <laughs> yeah, this pretty much my code works. I, no one ever knows why. So uh, yeah, these are a bunch of resources you can go out. I won't explain too much. Has anyone seen Great Hat Python or Violet, Violent Python books? Pretty awesome books. You should check them out. Um, I think it's like 40 bucks or something, or you could go online and get it however you want to do it. Um, they have a lot of examples where Violent Python, they're taking like old school hacks, or I think they were replicating uh, Stuxnet or something. There, there, were, there was a bunch of different things that they would replicate that would take maybe like a thousand plus lines in C where you could do it in Python in like 30 or something like that. I might be exaggerating there, but check it out. So takeaways, defense is important. If you're doing CTFs, you don't want to keep having to re-exploit the box. It's a pain in the ass. Um, when I was doing Cyber Olympics, there were like four Windows boxes that I had to sit there and waste time, to keep re-exploiting, planting the flag, and constantly doing it over while the other team is sitting there getting all the Linux boxes. And obviously we didn't win, but um, these kind of scripts will pretty much automate and make it so that you don't have to worry about that. So uh, think about how you would stop your own attack. So if you're a pen tester, how would you stop yourself? Just write a script and make it, make it work. Um, try to by bypass your script. When I was asking you about you know, what, would, what you could do to bypass that one script or make it do something that's not supposed to do or wasn't anticipated to do. Share your script with others. There's not a lot of defense stuff out there. I think it's because nobody wants to release their cool scripts and then someone else just writes something to beat that. I mean, these type of CTFs are pretty much whose scripts are better than your scripts. It, it's pretty weird. Uh, try out PL, PY installer. It's kind of neat. I mean, if you're not a huge coder, you don't want to learn C, just do some Python, make an executable and throw it on a box and it, it'll do some stuff for you. And yeah, don't use these scripts to def defend your network. It's uh, pretty terrible. That's all I got. So here's my uh, blog spot I just started not too long ago and a GitHub. You can grab all the code from there and shoot me an email. Anybody have any questions? Cool. All right. That's it. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>